same weight, and this time it's Seaman Wolfson trying to block out the pain in his red, raw hand. And you don't need a knowledge of Dutch to understand the encouragement he's getting. And it's obviously inspired him. Success there for Seaman Wolfson. irrepressible John Paul Sigmarsson of Iceland going for that same weight, 268 pounds. Last night, John Paul was looking all in, but now, with the resilience of youth, he's storming back on day two. Look at this! Well, we are looking at it, and it's going aloft. I'm from Iceland, he says, and plenty of rocks to chuck about up there. No tree trunks, but plenty of rocks. Now, Tom McGee, not really happy with this sort of event. He likes to work out a method and practice it. But he looks as if he's going to use much the same sort of technique that failed for Jeff Capes. Now, he's got to lock out these arms. And he's unable to lock out, so Tom goes out, and he's beginning to look dejected. Well, as you can see, it takes four ordinary mortals to carry in one of these boulders. There are three men left in the competition now, Wolfser, Sigmarsson, and Gamble, with the boulder now weighing 126 kilograms. If you want to gain some idea of this sort of event and what it's all about, if you ever struggle to lift a bag of cement, John Gamble is here trying to lift the rocky equivalent of two and a half of them over his head. Come on, John! Great lift. Success for John Gamble of the United States. Seaman Wolfser retires, leaving the challenge to John Paul Sigmarsson, who's stripped for action. And the usual invocation to the Viking gods of heavy boulders. Anyone got an aspirin? But not to be. <laughs> Histrionic despair from John Paul, and that means victory for the quiet man from Virginia. John Gamble collecting his maximum eight points. Seaman Wolfser and John Paul Sigmarsson collect six and a half points each for that equal second spot. And with five events down and three to go, Seaman Wolfser of Holland is still top of the board with 31 and a half points. Tom McGee, the man who was runner-up last year, is there again at this stage with 28 and a half. Jeff Capes just one point behind him. Well, there's no chance of a Scottish Highlander like myself feeling homesick in a country which looks so much like home. And this next event certainly compounds that. It's one of the classics of the Highland game circuit, the 56 pound weight over the bar. The big difference here is that in New Zealand, there's the lake behind us, which means that every throw will end with a big, big splash. The bar is at 14 feet as we join the competition. And only four competitors are left. Capes and McGee, who have cleared this height, and Sigmarsson, and this man, Seaman Wolfs, to go. It's good at these explosive events, and it's a good throw, despite that aching arm. Now, Sigmarsson. In theory, this event should favor the taller men with the long arms and the maximum pendulum effect. but it also needs good control and explosive power. Oh! And it's a good throw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And one in the eye for us. Well, Jeff Capes looking brooding and determined, 
as Sigmarsson and Wolfse had to settle for sharing joint third place. The battle is now on between him and Tom McGee. With a bar at 15 feet, Big Tom is custom built for this job. Oh, yeah! Six feet, four and a half inches tall, methodical and competitive, and he's going for it. Yes, they do it in Canada, and it shows. Now, Jeff Capes usually does this wearing a kilt in places like Cowell and Brimar. The man from Lincolnshire is now a Highland Games specialist, very familiar with the demands of this event. And just yeah! look at this. So the shootout between Britain's Jeff Capes and Canada's Tom McGee goes on. The bar is now being raised to 15 and a half feet, and you can read what you will into the looks that they're exchanging. As Tom McGee steps up now to make his bid. The man from British Columbia has lost that dejected look as he fights it out to the finish. Well, not quite. He's got the height, but the trajectory was wrong. In this sudden death situation, it's up to Jeff Capes now to clear this height to collect the maximum points. The tension is really building now. He makes it look so casual, and it's clear. He's pleased with that. Capes holds off the challenge of McGee to collect his eight points. McGee collects a valuable seven. Wolfse and Sigmarsson share the third spot, five and a half points each. On the overall scoreboard with 37 points, Simon Wolfse of Holland at the top. But only five points cover the first four places. So this is really boiling up with Capes, McGee and Sigmarsson all going to be in at death with Wolfse. Controversial event this, none of the competitors like the look of this apparatus at all. And it's a very difficult technique to master, but Jeff Capes here is really going to give it a go. And he's bellowing like the bull of Bishop. I think he prefers nylon to wool, don't you? Oh, rip! Come on! Use those legs! Legs! Big pull! Six feet, nine and a half, he raised the bale, a great effort there. And here's a man looking rather unhappy. Seaman Wolfson doesn't fancy this event at all. His hands badly blistered. His right Where arm heavily he? strapped, and suffering for his eyes. Go on, Seaman! Bang him up with both, Seaman! Both! Come on with both! Well, even on, if the encouragement is now in double Dutch, the pain is just too much. And that's it, two feet nine, and this could be a disaster for the Dutchman's hopes of maintaining that top spot. <laughs> Well, this fellow should know a bit about wool. He's Alan Holberg of New Zealand. He's a big chap, but he's using this tug-of-war anchorman technique, and that's a point of no return. It's exactly the same height each time because he's not pulling the rope hand over hand. And he decides that's quite enough of that. Three feet, nine and a half, and he beats Wolfse and gets a good hand from the local crowd. Now, Sigmarsson, a fellow who will relish this event. They have a somewhat similar event in the Viking game. And as you can see, he's using a hand-over-hand -hand technique, and this is what's needed. He even looks as if he's enjoying it. That indeed, a great effort. And it's the best so far, nine feet, ten and a half inches. It's a 
next competitor is Tom McGee, in third place overall, and it looks as if he's offering up a few words of prayer. After his poor showing in the Fergus Walk, he told me he was worried by the grip events. And there's a hint of desperation creeping into his efforts. Nancy says we need this one, and indeed he does need it, to stay in contention. But he's not getting it. Two feet one is the mark, and that should signify the end of his hopes for Tom McGee. <laughs> Maximum points for John Paul Signison. Seven for Jeffrey Capes, a creditable third place for local man Alan Hallberg with six. Wolfs and McGee, with four and two points respectively, must be in despair. With one event to go, the truck loading, a dramatic change on the overall scoreboard. Jeff Capes of Great Britain takes the lead. Simon Wolfser slips to second place, and John Paul Sigmerson is still in contention. With me now, two of the men who are within one event of the proud title of the world's strongest man, John Paul Sigmerson of Iceland and Geoffrey Capes of England. Geoffrey, how do you feel at this moment when it's all so very close in this last event? Uh, one of the nice things about it first is that the Europeans are one, two, three at the moment. It's not just that we're in a position of winning. Now, what about this young fellow here, John Paul Sigmundson? He really is something, isn't he? Well, the Australian commentator asked me what I thought of him, and I said, he's an animal. And he asked him what he thought of me. He said, he's an animal too. <laughs> so, uh, but it's the same old thing, you know. Um, when two animals get together, there's hell to play, you know, especially if we're, if we're both lions and male lions at that. Well, two male lions, in fact, uh, the leopard skin seems very appropriate. How do you feel right now? I'm tired, of course, but uh, I will do my best. And this is the kind of event in which your strength and speed could do you very well, couldn't it? Yeah. I'm not sure about uh, what I can do in this event. I was fourth in uh, Poland, strongest man of Europe. But I will try. We'll give it a go. Yeah, I will be angry. Jeff, the very first words you said in this program were, in the world, you've been fourth, you've been third, you've been second, and now maybe it's your turn to be first. Do you think it is? Well, I'm certainly going to try. I've got a lot of things to prove. Um, I want to do it for my own country, obviously. Um, but most of all, I want to do it for myself. And a suitably epic grand finale to this tough competition. Lorry loading. Ten sacks to be loaded, each weighing as much as the average man. 12 stone. And John Paul Sigmerson can afford to smile as he gets ready to go against the doer American powerlifter, Doyle Kennedy. This is by common consent, the hardest event in a hard competition. They call lorry loading the man killer. And John Paul is sprinting. <laughs> Well, as you can see, the refinement of cruelty that was added to this event in the European heat in Holland is here again. Flour in the bags, very fine flour that gets into the competitors' breathing and can stop them dead in their tracks. And it's done just that to Doyle Kennedy. But not this man, John Paul Sigmerson. It's going to be a very fast time. One minute, 31.7 seconds. <laughs> Do you get the feeling he's moderately pleased with that performance? But I'm not so sure about Doyle Kennedy. John Paul, first of all, congratulations on that amazing little bit of a run around with the sacks there. Thanks. Secondly, have you ever been to England? Yes, I have. Yes? Do you like to yeah. visit England? Yeah. Well, well I'll tell you something.